I ended up having to weld shut the breather hole on this axle because it was in the way of this backbone truss. So what I have here is uh, one of these bellows style breathers and to make that hole I've got a uh, tapered tap and a drill bit and I'm going to do that before I wash this thing that way I can spray out all the moon chunks. The rear axle housing is complete. It's all welded up with the exception of these brake disc brackets, uh, brake caliper brackets. Um, this is a kit that I bought from Rough Stuff. It comes with two brackets, which are bent in order to get the brake caliper in the right spot. That came with the brackets, both calipers without disc brakes. Um, this got, it came with two soft brake lines to go from your axle to the brake caliper. Came with some new brake uh, pads, and it came with two um, disc brakes from the front of a I think a Chevy. I don't think it's the Ford. It might be the Ford brake. I have to I have to look into that. I have to compare them to the front brakes on the Data 44. Um, so that's going on the axle. I've also got these, as I mentioned before. This is a air breather kit, which allows um, air to go in and out, but holds the water out of the axle housing. The new bolts for the new T-bolts for the axle housing on the ends, which hold these retainer plates, which sandwiches the axle shaft into the axle housing itself. I got this new hard. I got this new hardware for with uh, new washers, so that I can put the new differential in the housing. And I also got this pinion guard from Rough Stuff as well, which comes with uh, longer bolts. So if you order this, it'll give you the bolts that are a half inch longer to take up the width of the metal here. This is really heavy duty stuff, I think. This is half inch and this is 3 8 uh, My buddy uh, recently put one on his truck and smashed it into something and it's doing just fine. This is a Diet Dr. Pepper. I bought it from Walmart. This is my 35 spline axle shaft from Wild Horse. They are a Bronco company. Bronco and the old 70s Ford pickup trucks in some years used the same axle. So this is a direct replacement, but stepped up to 35 spline. And if you look at this, next to the old one, the actual shaft size up here is the same, um, however, when you get to the end, you can tell the 35 spline is way bigger than this one. And that's because it kind of steps down in size here and then steps down again right here. If you look at this from this end, you can tell it's a significant difference. Just in case you're wondering if you could replace your axle shaft without replacing your brakes, you can. 
without having to remove the bearing on the axle. So you can order these axles with the bearing pre-installed. The backing plate for the drum brakes will actually fit over this bearing and you can just use your original brakes. These plates are a little tight fit, but unlike the original, they have an opening on one end so you can slide it over and then clamp the axle on. These plates are about 3 16 in thickness as well, and I believe you can buy thicker ones, but you don't need to. I did see people having trouble um, fitting uh, this axle flange into this drum brake because there's a small lip around the corner inside this. And so the easiest way to, to fix that is to put this, set this up to where you can spin it and then grind off a little bit of the corner on this. So, so I'm gonna test to see if I can actually fit this in there. That's a really tight fit and I don't, it doesn't need to be that much taken off the edge. You can kind of see that lip in this corner right here. That's where, that's where the edge of this where flange would fit and so you just need to bevel this off just a little bit and then I'm going to sand around the flange so that it fits a little better on these brakes. And we'll get to that in a second because first I have to show you this if my table will support it. This I bought um, through Rough Stuff but it comes from Yukon already built. Everything's gear lashed as evident by their paint that they put on there. It has an ARB locker that is already set up and installed. Timken bearings in the side and everything is pre-adjusted. This was an expensive part but doing all the math as far as uh, setting up the locker with the gears and buying all the parts to do this with an updated nodular iron chunk and the right size yoke it would be just as much money to buy the parts and put it together but I'd have less time to do other stuff. So I would just went ahead and ordered this. It's interesting how the piston is set up. It's actually outside of this adjuster plate. So it looks like it would have been a little more difficult to, to set up these gears with an ARB in it than I imagined anyway. The only thing that I need to do on this thing is install this uh, pinion guard. So yeah, once that axle is dry, I can go ahead and, and stick that in there and then I also have a lube locker gasket I just need to go find it real quick Which, by the way if you're wondering how much this cost me it was around $2,300 with free shipping and I bought all this other stuff at the same time and this this chunk right here cost me more than twice what I originally paid for this Jeep Comanche. It's 100% not perfect, but I like it.